Hello everyone and welcome back to our Rebuilding Newcastle series here on FM22 and now I probably say this in every video but today's video is probably going to be the most important that we have potentially in the whole series. Not only do we have a Champions League semi-final, yes semi-final you heard that right we'll talk about that in a second, we also have the title decider game pretty much. If we lose, we're at a title race. If we win, then the last couple of games of the season are going to be super interesting as we get very close to the title. So today could either be a massive failure or a huge success. Hi everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel if you're new. And as you heard at the start there, today is going to be a double header. Not only do we have a semi-final in the Champions League against Benfica, which realistically could be a route into the final in only our second season here, but we also have probably the harder match of the two, which is away to Manchester United in the Premier League. Now, usually I go into a million different things before the game, but I don't think there's too much to do today other than to play these matches and look at our form. But before I do all of that, I just want to ask you guys, if you can, like the video, really, really does help in pushing these videos out to as many people as possible. This will hopefully be quite a good one, quite an entertaining one. So if you could like it, that'd be awesome. Drop a comment down below about anything, whether it's about these videos, who you think is going to win the match do you think we can win the champions league that kind of thing or if you just want to get involved put whatever you like and finally subscribe to the channel if you haven't already at the time of recording we're about 30 to 40 subscribers away from 5,000. so if you are watching and you haven't hit that button yet it's free to do so it would mean a lot to me but let's get right into the video so here we are <sighs> our season has gone just super super well like the start of the season we were good but Probably since January, our form has been incredible, like, and I mean super incredible. And it's put us in a place where we can potentially be in a Champions League final in a few days and the strongest forerunners for the Premier League. So we will look at our form and how we got to this point, because if you guys are keeping with the series, you'll know that the next game in the Champions League would have actually have been the quarterfinal, because we've only just got past the first knockout round when you last saw us. But we absolutely smashed Milan in the first leg, 4-1. And I thought, you know what, there's probably no chance that we'll lose this leg, so I don't see any point in showing it. And I was right because in the away leg we won 2-1, Vlahovic and Warprouse there. And then in the first leg we had Vlahovic, Schoberslai, St. Maximan and Badashile getting in on the goals, which really just sealed the deal for me. And I thought, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to show that game because I was just, you know, I, I felt like it was sorted and I didn't want to waste any more time on an episode that might drag out the series a bit too long. I like to keep these series fairly short and to the point. You guys know that by now. So I thought I'd skip that one and we went straight into a semi-final against Benfica. We drew away 2-2. We were in the lead and Benfica did score an equaliser, but it's not the end of the world because 2-2, even though away goals don't count, we have got the away leg out of the way now. So a home match, hopefully we can bring it home and take it into a final where we could be playing one of either Man U or Inter, I think it is, but we'll look into that a little bit more later. Um, but league form wise, obviously we have lost in the cup, as you can see here in the FA Cup. Maybe it's a blessing in disguise because it's one less game for us to play. But then the league, we've been absolutely smashing it. And it has meant that the league table currently looks like this. With four games left to play for us and five for Manchester United, we are joint level points with Man U. So if Man U were to beat us today, they've still then got a game in hand to go potentially six points ahead of us, at which point I'm thinking we're not going to catch them anymore. So I think we at least need to get a draw or a win here today. We are playing Liverpool at home towards the end of the season too. So it's kind of all in our hands. It's massive, really. It's, it really is massive, this game. You can see how close it is at the top of the table and how far away we are from the 4th, 5th, 6th chasing pack, really. They're nowhere near us in terms of quality level. Even our goal difference, which was way behind the other two teams a while back, it's starting to get a little closer to the point where that could potentially become interesting as the season goes on. We've only lost one game all season, and that was the 8-1 thrash into Man City, which just shows how much of a blip that was. And yeah, this is going to be a massive league match. Like I say, we're going to get right into it. I'm not going to waste too much time. But for you guys who are interested, and we'll look at this a bit more later, but the Champions League, here are the four contenders now for the Champions League title. Manchester United against Inter was the first leg where a home leg for Man U ended in a three-all draw, which is interesting because I would have thought they would have smashed Inter. But Inter, top of Serie A, are no slouches in themselves. So we'll see how it goes. I am prioritising in my head the Champions League. I've said it before, when we win the Champions League, this series will end. So even if we haven't won the Premier League title, the Champions League has always been the ultimate aim of this series. So if we can win that, then yeah, I suppose the series could be over already in season two. Who knows? But I think the way that the schedule's laid out, as you can see, we have had Benfica, three days later Man U, and then a few days later again Benfica. So one of these games is going to have to be the rotation side. 
And I think it will be this match against Man U. Bear in mind, they've also had Champions League football as well, so they could potentially be uh, switching their team around. Supposedly, Mbappe is out, which is good news to us. But let's get right into picking our team and hopefully get a win here against Manchester United. So already it's suggesting some rotation options. So we'll have a look at what that would make our team with them in. Um, Lavikovic, yes. Aspilicueta, I can do that. Kamara, yes. Badashile, I think he's going to have to play, even if he isn't fully fit. Windle, uh, Bolde, I'm going to start him instead, actually. Weigel can start, I suppose. Gilmore, yes. Basuma, yes. Rafina, I think I'm going to let Marcus Edwards start this one. He's been pretty good recently, Marcus Edwards, so I'm going to give him the nod. And then I think I will go for St. Maximan and keep Vlahovic. I think that's what we'll go for. Bench-wise, it's pretty much fine. Show I get Rafina on there, actually, for Cardalo, just in case we need him. But that's what we're going to go with. We're going to get right into it and hopefully come out of this video with two wins. But chances of that aren't very likely. Okay, here we go. The match against United is underway. Looking at their team, they've got De Gea, Gosens, Twanzebi, Varane, Wambasaka. I think they're playing their full 11 here. This is pretty much their best side. Maybe they're rotating for the intermatch. I don't know. I don't know what they're prioritising here. Probably the league. But 10 minutes in, nothing too much has happened. My biggest fear is, despite the fact that at home, I almost guarantee you we would have beat these on video, because it's away, our away form obviously hasn't been as good. We did lose 8-1 to Man City away. I'm hoping that their Manchester rivals don't inflict similar pain on us in this match. But early on, it seems to be all Manchester United. And it's Ronaldo with an early strike, which Livakovic saves. Sancho, are we going to get close enough to him to prevent the cross? Bold aid as well, on loan from Barcelona. This is probably the first time you guys are seeing him. He hasn't actually appeared too much for us, but this highlight is continuing with Vlahovic. He does it every time. Vlahovic does this every time. Someone actually asked in the comments, have I been doing something to force the players to chip? No, I don't know whether it's a trait that Vlahovic has, but he just seems to do it all the time, him and Rafina. It's a perfect run from him. St. Maxman did brilliantly. Freds it through to Gilmore. Gilmore with a lovely way of pass through there. And Vlahovic, you just never think that he's going to miss. Vlahovic and Nyanzu have been the players of the series so far, I think. Nyanzu probably for the consistency over the two years. This year he's on like a 7.8 average match rating. But Vlahovic, especially in the second half of the season, has really just hit his form and he is insane right now. Bear in mind this is our rotation team against Manu's first 11 as well. If we can keep this up, you know, if we play them in a one-off match in a Champions League final, we could beat them there too. Here's St. Maximan. Another chance for us. It's Basuma and it's a great save from De Gea that stops us going 2-0 up. Are we going to get another chance? It doesn't look like it will. But we've managed to deal with the ball going forward from Man U. And for a 20-minute period, I mean, like I said at the start, I thought it was going to be all Man U. They had the first few highlights, but we've turned it around. Hopefully they don't get a straight-back goal against us. Or as normal people would call it, an equaliser. I couldn't think of a word for it then. But they've just played another good ball in. It's a good bit of defending. Can we make it 2-0 and give ourselves a cushion? It's been an intense game so far. Badashile off the crossbar, bounces off the line and cleared away by the Manchester United player. This early pressure is brilliant. brilliant, brilliant. And I've just also seen that Liverpool have gone a goal behind against Aston Villa. Liverpool, of course, are the team that are top of the league. So this, this could be massive, this match here. This could completely turn around our league season, where for a while it looked like we'd never catch up to these teams. But we're playing so well recently. It's Maximan from a long range. I feel like we do need the second goal in this match. I feel like we really do need it. So something like that, I just need it to creep into the back of the net. I really do. Here's Gilmore with a ball in. Badashile with a header. He's done it. What a cross it is from Gilmore. Badashile at the near post. Near post corners. So, so effective in football manager this year. I've purposely not set it to be like the most amazing corner technique that I made a video on on FM Scout because that just got too many goals. So I've literally just done a normal corner technique and told him, aim it at the near post. Whoever gets there will get there. And it seems in this game, it's Badashile who's gone up and he has scored a brilliant header that puts his 2-0 up. Not even 30 minutes on the clock yet. Man, you have had chances, but we've just taken ours much better. Marcus Edwards, who's having a good game out there. What a ball that is from 31-year-old Aspilicueta. 31, he's probably about 34. I don't know where I got his age from there, but Vlahovic, that would have been so good if it had gone in. Two assists for Gilmore. Oli Watkins has put Liverpool to the sword. They're 2-0 down. Hopefully Aston Villa can hold out, and hopefully we can too. And I, I, I did not expect this when I recorded this. In my head, I figured we're going to beat Benfica, but lose to Manchester United. I don't know how it's going to go now. Here is Greenwood, though, looking to shut me up. Number nine for Manchester United on the right wing. Puts the ball into Ronaldo, who's probably going to win the header, you'd expect. Flicks it onto Pogba. Pogba flicks it into the back of the net. All too easy, really. Once they put that ball in, you just knew both of them were going to win their headers. Maybe if we had our main back line on, they would have been able to compete in the air, but this is a fairly small back line. Kamara is small. Bolde is small. 
and Aspilicueta is a lot smaller than Mikiel, so maybe we can put it down to that, but I don't think you'd be challenging Ronaldo in the air anyway, no matter what. But look at the league table here, it's going to be massive. Obviously this win does put us ahead of Man U in the league, but with their game in hand they will then be level with us, at which point it comes down to goal difference and they'll have more goal difference than us, but it doesn't matter anyway because they've just equalised 2-2. Twan Zabi has just turned this game around. I think it was a Pogba assist. Fernandez played it in. It came off Pogba's head. He nodded it down to Twan Zabi. Despite us having three players on the line, he was one yard away to tap it in. Liverpool get a goal back. It's all starting to go a little bit wrong for us here. But 2 till at half time, we can take that. Even if we forget we were 2 0 up, we can work on that and try and just win the game in the second half. Um, big thank you to you guys for supporting the series so far. Hopefully this is all accumulating in a massive final episode coming up soon, maybe where we have a Champions League final and the final match of the season. Who knows what's going to happen in this one. Maybe at the end of this episode we're out of the Champions League and we're out of our chance of winning the Premier League. I don't know. Um, but yeah, just a massive thank you for how you supported this series so far. Don't forget, if you want to join the Discord, you can find that link down below. Plenty of like-minded people who love Football Manager. Uh, near enough 200 members now might have even surpassed that mark. And just people providing tips, sharing their saves, that kind of thing. So if you want to get involved in that, feel free. But it's time for us to make some substitutions. This could be the make or break for our Premier League season. Can we win our title in the second year here? Badashile might have to come off despite a really, really good game. Because he is struggling. I'd still fancy Nyanzu to do a good job for us at the back. We just have to put Kamara in the other position. Weigel, getting tired, hasn't had a great game. I'm going to move Gilmore back and then I'm going to bring James Ward-Prowse on in that box-to-box -box role. Swap Basuma around. He, again, isn't having the best game. Could bring on Joe Willock. Alternatively, we have Barbosa and Toram, who I think might be better served in a game like this. And I think we go for Rafina actually, on that right wing for Marcus Edwards. He was fully fit before the game. I just chose not to use him because I imagined, despite his full fitness, he might be getting a bit tired because he plays every game. So I've not risked him for the hope of him playing in the Champions League. But now, oh man, you have gone 3-2 up and Liverpool are drawing 2-2. Football manager does this to you, man. It really does. It gets your hopes up only to just snatch it away right at the end. Still 20 minutes, so we could still turn it around. But it, a free goal comeback, it's just not your, what you want to see. I was hoping to build some confidence here in case we have to play him in a Champions League final, but it's not done much for me. Ahmad Diallo, former football manager wonder kid, probably still is a wonder kid actually, isn't he? He's still quite young, has gone and scored against us. 15 minutes on the clock. War Prowse is on, Nyandu are on. Them two seem to link up all the time at set pieces. Hopefully we can get a little bit of that. 3 2. Come on, we can do something. We have got the ball. It's War Prowse. Great ball through to Vlahovic. Oh, he's got to finish that. I said earlier that he never misses them kind of chances. I was waiting for it to hit the back of the net and he's just kind of like smacked it right at De Gea. He could have done anything with that really. That is very annoying. Ward Prowse puts the ball back in. Okay, it's ended. The highlight's ended. This is really disappointing. Liverpool are still drawing, so if we can get a draw here, I suppose that isn't the worst thing in the world. But again, we're just going to be then waiting on Manchester United to mess up somewhere and I don't see him doing that. Sancho, thankfully Man you don't make it 4-2. It's a poor shot from Sancho. A good save from Livakovic. Aspilicueta deals with the danger and now we've got five minutes left to potentially win the ball back and counter but it looks like it's going to be another Man U highlight wan on the ball Phil jo have they brought Phil Jones on? that's just taking the mick now Aspilicueta to Livakovic quick ball out to Rafina. Basuma Vlahovic this is great football Rafina's through Rafina's on the right wing he's just got to put a ball into someone he tries to pull it back but it just doesn't work out I thought that was 100% going to be our highlight but it doesn't look like it's going to be that way Greenwood's ran through. Greenwood chips the goal in. He's chipped it just over the bar. We can count ourselves lucky there because he usually finishes chances like that very, very easily. I'll demand more. It looks like it's going to be game over. Two minutes of added time left. One minute of added time. It looks like it's going to be a man-new goal, but we could potentially counter. Twan Zabi's just jumped over, and I think he's won himself a penalty. And this might be our league season over, which again, I'm not expecting to win the Champions League and Premier League in our second season. It just would have been really nice if we'd kept that 2-0 lead, because then who knows what would have happened. Okay, all eyes are going to be on the Benfica game after this. Maybe we can have a penalty save here, but I have not seen one yet in FM22. We've had a fair few penalties against Livakovic. We've just never had one saved. And he almost saves one there. I hope we never go to a penalty shootout because, like I say, we still haven't saved one. And I'd hate that to be the first time when I have to hope for him to make a save. Oh, that, this is this is tough to take. Again, it's one of them where I would have been perfectly fine with losing 4-2. It's the fact that we were 2-0 up 
um, and we kind of just threw it away. Nothing changed, man. You just grow into the game, I suppose. But looking at that now, assuming Man U win their game in hand, which they will, they'll go 91 points ahead. That's six points away from us. Goal difference is like plus 14. I think the league title is out of reach now. And I think all focus is now going to have to come into the Champions League run, focused using all of our best players in that game, which we will do. You've got to bear in mind that wasn't our best 11 by a long distance. We have apparently just had to pay Brighton 6 million, which is another kick in the teeth for the Basuma deal. I assume we've now fully paid that off now. 42 million he cost us. Not a bad signing at all for how well he's done. Greenwood, yeah, I've heard about him, Scout. Yeah, I have actually heard about Greenwood, wouldn't you know? Right, I'm quickly going to move it to the Benfica game, pick the team, and we'll get right into that. I've got a few days to simulate here, so I'll just go through and see what happens. Okay, here we go. It's the day of the Benfica game. I'm going to ask you guys to drop in the comments down below something completely random, but planning for next season, I've just gone and signed a new wonder kid right back for our team. Can you guess who we've brought in? That's what I want to ask you guys. Guess which player we've brought in for our right back position. Uh, he's probably going to be a backup, I think, in the first couple of seasons that we have him, but who knows what he's going to do long term. He, he has got amazing potential. Before we get right into that uh, Benfica game as well, I just thought I'd show you the youth intake players we got. Most of them are fairly average, but like how we got Richard Crockard from the first set of youth intake players, we now have Peter Haldane coming through in this set. He's got great flair, great technique, great first touch, decent physicals for his age, good determination, a striker or a left-sided player, but at six foot four, if we can increase his pace, he could be brilliant up front, wanted by some fairly big clubs already, nothing major there, but clubs that could potentially come in for this guy. Looks like he's got potential. If you do want to have your name on the Youth Intake players, there's a join button next to the subscribe button that if you're interested in, click on it. There'll be a little video of me explaining what it is and you can decide if you want to get involved in it there. It's just a way to support the channel. But here we go. Benfica, Champions League final. Semi-final, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. But with a 2-2 draw in the first leg away from home, you'd hope we'd be able to come out of this match with a ticket to the Champions League final. So let's pick our team. Livakovic, yes. Interested by Inter Milan. I potentially would sell him if I could find a goalkeeper we could replace him with. Mikiele right back. Nyanzu, yep. Kamara. I assume Badashile is too tired to play. He's slightly tired. Kamara, I will keep on, I think. Actually, you know what? No, I've got to prioritise the Champions League. Kamara can be on the bench if we need him. Windle at left back, yes. War Prowse there, no. That's got to be Julian Weigel. No doubt about it. That's got to be Weigel in a game like this. We're going to go Shubazlai at Mitzala. Basuma, you're not playing. War Prowse is. Rafina Toram, not Barbosa. Despite the fact that he missed a late chance, I've got to go for Vlahovic, even if he's slightly tired. That should still be fine. And after about 60 minutes, when he's starting to die off in the game, we'll then bring someone on. John Joe Shelby is on the bench, but he doesn't need to be until the Champions League final. If you don't remember, I made a promise in the first episode that John Joe Shelby will be playing when we're in the Champions League final. I said when we'd win the Champions League, but he is uh, his contract's expiring. He's decided to leave at the end of the season, so he probably won't be here for that. But I'll hold out hope that we can use him at some point. Um, I'd rather have Gilmore on the bench and Willock. And I think that's what we're going to go for. Yeah, right. This is the team we're going to go with. Massive game here. If we do get knocked out here, because our chances are so slim of getting a Premier League title, I'll probably just skip to the start of Season 3. But I'm not going to get ahead of myself yet. We'll explain that afterwards, depending on what happens in this game. But we could have a Champions League final on the horizon. Should we make it past this match against Benfica, which we really should do. Not saying they're a bad team. They're obviously a great club, but I think... Looking at the squads, we have definitely got a better squad. And based on that first leg, we were the better team, I think. And straight away, my choice of picking Badashile has came off. He scored a header from a James Ward-Prowse set piece. Is it going to be awarded? I, I feel like he was on side. 1-0. 1-0. f Not even a minute into the match. Ward-Prowse whips it in. Badashile at back post. It's actually a back post free kick, not a near post corner that we score. So there we go. That's something for us. Jesse Lingard is apparently in this Benfica team. It's not a bad forward line, but I would say we've definitely got a better... Like, their defence is not great at all, to be honest. Can we make it 2-0 early on and give ourselves a cushion? Not that it means anything based on that Manchester United match. War Prowse whips in. Jobas lie. He scores on camera. Last episode when you saw him, he was getting very close to scoring. He has been playing really well since then. For £70 million, you'd hope he would. But he's just hitting the ground running for us. What a player he has became. What a signing he has been in January, he's really just taken us up a notch in that midfield. Bear in mind, he took Ruben Loftus Cheek's place in the squad, which was a player we weren't using too much. Great header at the back post. That's a perk of him being a tall physical threat as well. Wow. 
that was an easier start than I could have anticipated, but I also probably thought that in the Man U game, Will Prowse in, Nianzu off the crossbar, we are making a marker here to let all the other teams know. If we can win this like 5 or 6 nil, can you imagine the fear that the other Champions League finalists are going to have playing Newcastle United in a Champions League final? I think it's in Moscow, but I'll have a look where the final is. I don't know where I've got that from. But 35 minutes in, pretty comfortable. Our XG suggests we probably shouldn't be 2 nil up. But Benfica have not even had a shot yet. Not even like a shot on target. They just haven't had a shot. We've been all over them. This is where they'll score a goal, won't they? Yeah, and Bolo. One ball to Darwin Nunes. It's a great tackle. What a tackle by Nianzu. Stopping what should have been a guaranteed goal there, really. I love that from him. Tracking back, using his pace. He's really good physically. I'll show you his attributes at half-time, actually. Because Nianzu has just been... He's one of the players that we've signed. And he's just kept increasing, increasing, increasing in terms of his attributes. Like, he's got to such a high level now. Mukiele, Torofina, can we make it 3-0? Weigel, incisive pass through the middle. Vlahovic is through. He's got the pace. He's going to try and chip. No, he's not. He's pulled it back to Rafina. Powers it in. Vlahovic, if he had chipped it, probably wouldn't have gone in. He didn't listen to me. He played the perfect pass. Set it up for an easier goal. 3-0. Rafina, who obviously we signed right at the start of his save, has been a consistent performer for us. Weigel finally doing what we want him to do with them incisive passes. It's actually really nice to look at. Vlahovic then tucks it back, didn't expect that to be honest, and pulls it back for a Rafina shot, which is always going to be destined for that top corner from that far away. He's rifled it in. Still, our XG has not hit one, but we are dominating the match. What a performance this has been. If we just go to the team that I want to show you quickly, Nianzu, he's developing like mad. Now valued at near enough £200 million. His physicals are what makes him such a monster, even though he's only six foot two, which is fine, but for a centre back, you might expect a little bit more. Vlahovic, has he got tries chips? Tries first time shots, but no, nothing about trying chips, so I don't know where he gets that from. Maybe it's just the FM match engine this year has just led to that kind of thing happening more. But it's been a great performance from us here. Our four key players, I would say, right now are Vlahovic, Nianzu, Schroeberzlai, and Ward Prowse, and they're all performing in today's match. Nianzu just needs a goal, and then, <laughs> then everyone's sorted. But here we go, 45 minutes left, and it's pretty much guaranteed right now that we will be heading into a Champions League final. Vlahovic, I was about to sub him off saying that we've got this game won. And Livakovic has probably just made sure that that is the case because he just made a brilliant save from that corner. I went speechless for a second because I was waiting to see if the ball did cross the line. But I think now we can take Vlahovic off. It's not a bad substitution at all to bring Gabi Gol off from the bench. Ward Prowse probably also needs a rest. I think he can come off for Billy Gilmore and then Badashile can come off for Kamara which was, of course, the substitution that the game suggested at the start anyway, because they didn't think Badashile was fit enough to play. But he's gone and scored a goal within a minute, set this whole game up and going. Scored in the other game as well, didn't he, against Manchester United. A good couple of games from Badashile, considering he's a player that I'm probably looking to replace, at least not, not from the squad. He'll be in the squad, but he probably won't be a starting centre-back next year. Gabby Gold is through. He's lifted it over the goalie with his left foot. What a shot that was. I don't care what the referee says. That was nowhere near our side. Guarantee this says goal awarded. I'm basically human VAR. Watch this. Close my eyes. I bet you've actually said goal awarded. Please tell me it did. I think it actually has. Okay, good. I, I thought I was going to make myself look stupid there, but it's a great pass from Toram. He was nowhere near being offside. And he's just lifted it over the keeper. Almost looks like he scuffed it, but I'm sure he meant it. 4 0 up. Barbosa getting a goal after coming on floor Vlahovic. Shows the kind of depth that we've got. Vlahovic didn't even score today, and we're still dominating this game. They've not got a bad team, though, Benfica. It's just a load of players, I think. You know, Otamende probably passed it. If that's Alberto Moreno, which it is, probably passed it. Jesse Lingard probably passed it. Um, and Bolo obviously used to be good. Luis and Nunes, I know, are good players in Football Manager. It just doesn't look like it's worked out for them in this match. I think it was Nunes that caused us a bit of a problem in the first game. But wow, we threw the Premier League title away in the first match of this episode, but now we are in a Champions League final with a convincing 4-0 win in our second leg against Benfica. I mean, Benfica, Nice and AC Milan, it probably can't get easier in terms of a run to a Champions League final. I'd argue I've never actually had an easier run than that. We have qualified for the Club World Cup, but now I kind of just want to see who we're going to play in the final. Um, Nianzu did impress, of course, an 8.5 without scoring a goal goes to show the levels that that boy has reached. I'm just going to keep going because I feel like the other game should be the day after, right? Am I wrong in that? Are we about to see Manu into Milan? I hope we are. Um, Gilmore apparently playing well. Uh, we are signing a recruitment analyst that I never did anything about. Here are the new scholars, the new youth intake officially signed. It's got to be on this day. Tell me it is. Tell me I'm not just clicking for no reason. Here we go. 
Inter Milan, Manchester United. I'm praying for Inter Milan, to be honest. Man U just kind of scares me. They've done it. Inter Milan have gone through. We are playing Inter Milan in a Champions League final. AC Milan, Inter Milan, Nice, and who we just played. Who was it? Benfica. I think they're four. You know, you know, it could have been a lot harder. It could have been Real Madrid, PSG, Man U, Man City. I'll definitely take this. Inter Milan, first in Syria, probably by a comfortable margin. Actually, not that far ahead of Roma. They've lost a fair few games this season. Looking at some of their more expensive players down here, they've got a pretty nice squad, to be honest. Their manager is Inzaghi. We are playing in the state of Bayern Munich Stadium, 75,000 capacity, a massive Champions League final. I think we can do it. I, I genuinely think we could do this. It just annoys me that we're on the left and uh, we're on the right and not the left because I've said this in previous videos. I think if you're on the left, you actually get an advantage because it makes you think you're the home team. It probably doesn't, but I like to think that way. But I think that's when you'll next see us, guys. So we've got the last few games of the Premier League season to play. Hopefully, we can finish in a strong second place finish ahead of Liverpool after beating them in our final few games of the season. No injuries, no worries, anything like that. And then we can hit the ground running in that Champions League final, which might potentially be the last episode of the series. We'll see how it goes. But thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, you have enjoyed it. If you did, hit the like button down below. It would really mean a lot. Subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time, guys. Goodbye.